Hi everybody, this is Bob and the gang from Edward Siegel Manufacturing. Uh, my name is Bob Miller. I'm your factory authorized sales rep for the entire product line of automatic setting machines. Edward Siegel Manufacturing is located in Connecticut and they've been manufacturing uh, automatic grommet setting machines since 1942, so nowadays they're pretty good at it. Uh, I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina, that's East Coast time. If you're looking for me for price and availability information, please give me a phone call. Today, I'm very excited to be able to present to you our full line of automatic setting machines. We have two machines here that are sitting side by side. So you're gonna get a really great presentation of the controls, features, and settings on these machines. Uh, we have two models here. First model here, we call a model 3PGW. This model over here is our model 4KGW. Uh, this is our number one selling machine, which you'll predominantly see out in the field. Um, oh, by the way, for all of us who own Edward Siegel ground machines, we all say the same thing. You own a Siegel, you buy a Siegel, you own it for 20 to 30 years. They don't die, they just keep running. Um, so, today is going to be my presentation on fully automatic setting machines. What makes this a fully automatic setting machine? Both of these machines do the identical function. Both of these machines are equipped identical. They're equipped with a hopper bin. In the hopper bin, you place your grommets and washers. Both machines are equipped with a raceway. Um, the machine automatically feeds grommets and washers down into the setting base. This is the setting base where your operators are going to be placing the work. Both of these machines are equipped with a foot pedal, so your operator is hands-free. So all your operator has to do is place the material in the setting base, step on the foot pedal, and it magically sets grommets and washers for you. I'm going to get into the controls, features, and settings on both machines. The 3PGW and the 4KGW, like I said, are identical functions. I finally figured out how to present these two machines to the industry, and this is what I came up with. If you are a grand format, heavy duty, high volume, running around the clock shop, I consider you a full-time banner maker, and I consider this the machine you want to be if you're full-time making grommets. If you are a small sign and graphic shop, and you are part-time making banners, where like in my shop, I could be on a roll with them several days in a row, and then the machine can lay up for upwards of a week to two weeks. I consider that me being a part-time uh, grommet setter. So I'm gonna present this to you here as to heavy duty industrial use, full-time, part-time use. Uh, let's get into the 3PGW. I like this machine. I've had it, Siegel sent this to me. I've had it for about four months, and uh, this is what I've concluded. It's small, it's lightweight, it's portable. This is a fully pneumatic machine. It's 100% air driven. There are no electronics on the machine. There is no power supply coming to this machine. Uh, and the thing that I really like about this machine is it weighs 80 pounds. And that's significant in my shop. I'm a small shop, so I do have a designated heat welding station. I do have a designated grommeting station. In this case, I can move the grommet machine where I want. If I need to clear off my tables for other applications, 80 pounds, I pick this up, get it out of the way. This machine, weighs 600 pounds and it is on a very heavy duty base so I consider this a permanent installation uh, where I don't make a tendency to roll it around a shop um, so I'm going to get into some controls features and settings about what you need to know about ordering your grommet machines um, as far as I'm concerned there are four style ways to mount your grommet machine not three four the first way, and this pertains to both machines, the first is to bench mount your machine. It arrives at your shop. Um, the easiest solution is to bolt it to the tabletop, and that way it's a permanent installation. Your second way is to use a caster plate. Both machines are equipped with a caster plate. This is the caster plate that's available for the 3PGW, and as you can see, it's small, it's portable, it's lightweight, and you can move it around the shop. This is the caster plate for the 4KGW, and as you can see, it's a very formal heavy-duty plate. So, the second way is to use a caster plate. The third way to bench mount your fully automatic grommet machine is uh, what I refer to as a pedestal base. The pedestal base that's available on the 3PGW is as you see it here. Um, in the back of the pedestal base are two caster wheels and a uh, handle on it, very similar to like a hand truck operation, where you can lay the machine over on an angle, move it in and out of your workflow. The caster base on the 4KGW is a much more formal, heavy duty base. And the fourth way to mount your fully automatic grommet machine, which I am a huge fan of, which is what I've done in my shop, is to cut a hole on my tabletop and inset the grommet machine so the setting base, and I consider this the setting base, this platform, insert the setting base, 
so it is flush to your table surface. That way your work table is providing the carrying method mo modes for supporting the media. And I am a huge fan of insetting my grommet machine uh, into a table base. Next thing you need to know. Edward Siegel Manufacturing manufactures grommet machines. They do not manufacture grommets and washers, and they do not sell grommet and washers. So it's very important that you know when you order these machines, we all use, especially, especially these part-time shops, we all use hand-setting grommet presses that require self-piercing grommet and washers. These two machines require machinable grommet and washers. You cannot take self-piercing grommet and washers and put them in these machines, you will get negative results. And the same goes vice versa. The machinable grommets and washers in these machines, you cannot use in your hand press. Edward Siegel works very closely with the grommet stamping manufacturers here in the US for making machinable grommets and washers. So you have to work closely with myself or the Siegel staff to determine which code number grommet and washers you need for your machines depending on where you're buying them from. Uh, so like I said, the national science supply companies and the regional science supply companies are not authorized to sell machinable grommet and washers. They only sell self-piercing grommet and washers. So work closely with this. We make sure you get the right grommet and washer supplies. Um, the next criteria for you determining what to do with your machine is what I call the three speed settings of your machine, which has a direct correlation on the mounting, how you decide how to mount your machine. The speed setting, the speed settings on this machine are literally rapid fire. It's, it's like a grommet machine gun. And the speed settings on this machine are different. This is a pneumatic device. It has a large cylinder piston that's air charge. And the foot pedal is also a pneumatic foot pedal. So this device is still a very fast setting grommet machine, but there is a duty cycle or a dwell cycle between each grommet setting mode, uh, approximately two seconds. And you'll see me demonstrate this when I use the machine. The uh, second uh, criteria for setting speeds of grommet washing are what I call the dreaded corners, where you need to drop, knock grommets into the corners. I do find that I slow down when I set grommets and washers into the corners. Um, and the third criteria for you setting uh, uh, speed settings with your grommet machines are what I call an uphill climb. What does that mean? This has a direct correlation to how you mount your, your grommet machine. If your grommet machine is inset into a table surface, the material is riding on a supported surface and it provides a very fast way for your operators to feed uh, material into the setting throw. If you are any of the other mounting processes, which would be bench mount, caster plate, or on a pedestal base, you have what I call an uphill climb. An uphill climb means I need to put the material into the setting base and the material is overhanging or draping. That has a direct effect on your speed of settings. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of insetting or cutting a hole on my tabletop. Um, next criteria is what I refer to as splitting the difference. At, uh, at Edward Siegel Grommet Machines, we are going to set your grommet machine for you. We refer to it as setting the horn, or more simply put, setting the setting pressure on the setting plate to accommodate all the types of medias that are typically used in the sign and graphics business. I've taken it on my own to put together a list of what I call common call medias used in the graphic business. I'm gonna blast through these real quick. Uh, 13 ounce front lit, 15 ounce front lit, 18 ounce block out, uh, 20 ounce pole banner, uh, 26 ounce truck tarp. I make, I do make banner applications for truck, for truck, tied tarp, truck sides and also for dumpster covers. Uh, other other uh, common coal medias are going to be good old reliable fence mesh material, seven and a half ounce, nine ounce fence material, uh, billboard material, uh, seven and a half ounce down to three and a half ounce. I don't normally grommet that stuff, but, and then uh, a product of common coal materials, what I'm going to encourage all of you to do with your fully automatic grommet machines is to start pushing hanging signs. When I bought my fully automatic machine, it was very expensive for me, and I had to come up with other products to work with so I've developed a product line of hanging signs, and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. On to the next topic, product support. Uh, when we set your horn for you, I'm going to send you, and my staff at Seagull are gonna send you what I call my monster file. A monster file is a computer file that I'm gonna print out, you're gonna print out at your shop. What we need you to do is throw a piece of scrap material in and print out a five foot by 10 foot printout of this file. What's on this file is what I call a stripe file. There are 11 four inch ribbons on this sheet here. What we want you to do is to print that out 
with the raw material thickness that you're working with in your shop, in this case, 20 ounce backlit, and we need you to hem three, four, or five of each one of these materials and send them to this. And at our shop, we are going to set the setting pressures for you based on the material you send us. So it's very important you work with the monster file. And in particular, if you're gonna be adding hanging signs into your product mix, we need to know that and we need to have the material there to properly set your setting base. Enough of that, let's get right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and do some grommet setting applications uh, in in the six common call banner materials that I was talking about, and I'm also gonna throw some hanging signs into this. So everybody wants me to start off with a really tricked out machine, but I'm gonna turn out, start with this machine. I like this, I've had this four months. I'm finding a lot of versatility with this, and I'm gonna go ahead and start setting uh, grommet washers. Both of these machines as shown are equipped with number two grommet washers. So, I get into the setting base, and I set my grommet washer. And as you can see, I'm taking my time, I'm taking into account my duty cycle, allowing the machine to charge correctly, and look at the quality on this here. I just set into a fold over hem into 20 ounce backlit, uh, and I am not degradating the edge of the machine, uh, edge of the banner material. Switch to the other machine. Wait to see the speed in action on this machine. You guys are going to love this. Let me find a good spot here. Yeah, right here. Oh, you guys are going to love that. <laughs> Look at the speed of action on that machine. So let's continue here. Let's make it a little difficult on myself in my presentation here. Let's switch to 9 ounce mesh. This material can be very finicky. Oh, by the way, there's this, there's this uh, toss up conversation when you're making fence mesh. Some of my customers require me to put uh, webbing into this material and some of them don't. So your grommet machine settings are very important, which is why you need to send that material to us at Siegel. If you're working with uh, weldable uh, weldable uh, reinforcement, send those samples to us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this on the 3PGW. Nice, look at how quickly I just said that. All grommets are fully suspended in your fold over hem. I am not degradating or towing in the edge of the material. Let's switch to the big machine. We're on a good spot. Here we go. Look at that. All grommets fully suspended in the fold over hem. Oh, by the way, I'm an outdoor event specialist. I specialize in decorating outdoor festivals and sporting events and I use ball bungees, which means my banners are under tension. So it is very important to me that my grommets are fully suspended in my fold over hem. Let's do another one. Here's a good one. We all run this material. 13 ounce front lid. Come on over here to the 3PGW. Now let's get to work. Nice, fully suspended in that fold over hem. Let's switch to the big machine. Look at that. Look at that. I'm not towing in the edge, jumping around from both machines. All right, let's mix it up. Let's throw in some hanging signs. In my uh, outdoor event business, I've developed a series of hanging signs, and I've got a whole bunch of different unit sizes that are very common to us. This particular one is a 6 inch by 12 inch. I refer to this as a boost sign or a exhibitor sign uh, on good old reliable 4 millimeter coroplast. So let's get to it. Look at that. So, one of the things that are important to Edward Siegel when you order your machine is we set your setting base correctly. I'm looking for in grommet setting and, and hanging signs that I'm not significantly towing in or crushing the edge of the material. I can deal with this. This is within my quality requirements. 
A lot of guys ask me, Bob, do you make a taller, is there a taller size grommet that you can put in here to help crush in the grommet and washers? And the answer to that question is yes. But in my shop, I don't do that. What I've concluded here is to set my machine up to split the difference to cover me on all different types of materials and never make an adjustment in setting on the machine. So at this kind of a low price point, down and dirty, four millimeter, I'm satisfied with this, this machine setting. Watch this over here. All right, so hanging grommets and washers and hanging sign applications. Oh, right, here's a good one. We all make 18 inch by 24 inch yard signs. Let's knock a few in this. Look at that. Nice grommet setting. What, with a big machine? Let's go ahead and do a corner set. Look at that. Look at the quality on that corner set. I didn't tow in the edge of that material. So uh, do one more, one more real quick. Here's a hard, a tough one. A 24 by 36 or a 2 foot by 3 foot. Good old reliable menu board signs or sonicate signs. Hey, it's a big sign. I got to be able to get this into the throat. So I'm going to come around the side on this. Get myself in position. Set grommet and washer. Look at that. On the big machine. This is a big sign. It's tough to handle. Get that quality of setting. All right, I am going to ride off into the sunset with one or two more applications on uh, flexible media. Here's one I don't normally set grommets and washers and billboard material, but this material is difficult. It's thin, it's lightweight, it's flimsy. But you saw me go to up towards the 20 ounce, and then I'm going to mesh, and then I'm going to drop down to this. Not towing in the edge on this. Over to the big machine. Pick a good spot. Look at that for quality. And uh, one more that I use all the time in my shop. I'm an outdoor event specialist. I always use 18 ounce block out banner material. I'm gonna do this. Fully suspended in that fold over him. Look at that for quality. All right, that is it. That is my presentation today of the Edward Siegel Manufacturing uh, product, full product line of our two fully automatic grommet setting machines. Uh, both machines are standing side by side, so you've gotten a really good bird's eye view of the difference between these machines. And in particular, my demonstration, you saw the difference in the speed setting between the two machines. Uh, on that note, thank you for watching the video. My name is Bob Miller. I'm your factory authorized sales rep of the automatic setting machines manufactured by Edward Siegel. I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're looking for me for product information and pricing, please give a call. Uh, thank you for watching the video, and that's a wrap.